Good morning everybody, it is lovely to see you. It's Jude Lennon here, storyteller with Little Lamb Tales and also a an author, children's author mostly, but I also write for grown-ups as well. It's lovely to see you here this morning. We've got a bag full of more stories. This week we're going to do something a little bit different though. This week we're going to go around the world in stories. So each day I'm going to have three stories that are from three different places around the world. So today, just looking in the bag, We've got a story from Africa, we've got a story from Germany, and we've got a story from Ireland as well. So we've got three different places today that we're going to visit. Just before we start our stories, obviously, I need to welcome our special guest. We've got Tiger here today. He's promised to be very good, so I'm sure he will be. And obviously, we've got Lammy here as well. So before we begin our stories, should we do our song, Lammy? Okay, if you've been here before, you know how it goes. It's really simple. If you only tuned in today for the first time, don't worry, it's so easy. Even grown-ups can do it. Here we go, everybody. Hello, everyone, how are you? Hello, everyone, how are you? Hello, everyone, how are you? How are you today? If you're feeling all right, give Lammy a wave. Hi, Lammy. If you're ready for stories, give yourselves a pat on the back. And if you're ready to get going, Give yourselves a smile, a big smile for a Monday. Okay, here we go. We're going in the bag. Oh, ah, the first story we've got is our story from Ireland. Actually, this story takes place in two different places, so Ireland and in Scotland, but it's it's mostly from Ireland, this story. And it's it's about not one, but two giants. Okay, here we go. Now, some of you may or may not know this, but in up in Ulster, which is the northernmost kingdom or county of Northern Ireland and over in Scotland there is something called the Giant's Causeway and in Ireland they've got these lovely hexagonal uh, shaped stones so they look like a bit like a beehive and on the island of Staffa which is off Scotland they're there in a the cave as well and the, the, the belief is that there used to be a causeway called the Giant's Causeway and this is how this causeway came about. Here we go. Now this story happened a long time ago, so you know how we begin our stories that happened a long time ago. Are we ready? Long, 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 long. All together now, long ago. Far away from here, in Northern Ireland, there was a giant, Finn McCall. And that giant thought, hmm, I want to go and speak to those giants in Scotland. I've heard they think they're the best. Ha! I know that I'm the best. And so he set about making the giant's causeway. And he got great big pieces of stone that had six sides and he stacked them next to each other out across the sea from Northern Ireland right the way over to Scotland. And then Finn said to his wife Una, I'll be back soon. I'm off to go and speak to those giants, especially that Bannon Donna heard he thinks he's the best. I'll teach him. And so he set off across the causeway. Let's go. He ran. Now he got great big footsteps. Remember, he's a giant. He ran and he ran and he ran and he ran and he ran. He said, hey, giant Ben and Donna, you think you're so tough. Out you come. The giant Ben and Donna heard him and stepped out and said, who do you think you are? Speaking to me like that. I'll have you. And he started to chase Finn back across the giant's causeway. Uh-oh, this was not a good idea. Finn had not realised just how big the Scottish giant was. And he ran as quickly as he could. Can you do big giant running? He ran and he ran and he ran and he ran. He got home and he said to his wife, Una, Oh, oh, I've done something a bit daft, really, she said. You do surprise me. Well, yes, because the giant from Scotland's coming here and, and I think he might be a bit cross with me. Don't worry, said his wife. I've got a plan. Get into the bathtub, she said, and pull a sheet right up to your chin. And she also put a bit of a bonnet around his head. Be there and be quiet. Leave the rest to me. Not long after that, a fearsome roaring came. It was the sound of the Scottish giant arriving. His big, big footsteps were making an awful, awful noise. Where's that Finn McCall? He called. 
Um, I'm afraid at the moment Finn has gone out, but I was just about to make his dinner. Would you like to stay here instead? said his wife Una. Aye, all right. So the giant sat down and said, but where will I put my spear? It's very big. And Una thought, oh, it is a big spear. It went all the way up, taller than the house. I'll tell you what, pop it over there next to Finn's spear. And when the giant looked, he saw a really tall, narrow tree that was even taller than his spear. Oh, is that Finn's spear? Yes, said Una. It's a little bit bigger than yours, isn't it? But never mind, yours will be fine there. In you come. She sat down and she cooked some griddle bread, but she didn't tell the giant this, but she left the iron griddle, so it's really hard, inside the bread. So when the giant picked it up, Ooh, ow, ow, and three of his teeth fell out. Oh, that never happens when Finn eats my bread. His teeth must be much, much stronger than yours. Oh, oh, okay said the giant. By now the Scottish giant was getting a bit worried. Maybe Finn was bigger than he'd seemed and stronger. Hmm. Next, Una said, here, have something to drink. And she filled a bucket with honey beer. And the giant picked it up. Are you ready to glug it down? Glug, 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 glug. After that, he felt a little bit woozy in his head. And Una said, come and see the baby. She's ever so sweet. So Finn went in and he saw the baby lying in a bathtub. And of course it was Finn in disguise, so the baby looked enormous. That, that, that's the baby, said the giant from Scotland. Yes, we expect she's going to be quite as big, nearly as big as her father when she's fully grown. Oh, mm. the Scottish giant was getting even more worried. Seemed this Finn was even bigger than he thought at first. He went outside with Una and Una said, I tell you what, um, just wait here a second. Um, these are the boulders, these are the boulders the children play with. Maybe you'd like to have a go at throwing one. Oh, OK, said the Scottish giant. He tried to pick up the boulder, but it was huge and it was heavy. He thought, these are the ones the children play with. These giants must be extraordinarily big and extraordinarily strong. He managed to pick up the boulder and he lifted it up and he dropped it on his head. Do you know what, he said, um, I think I'm going to away back to Scotland. Um, thanks very much for feeding me and for looking after me, and I'm off on my way. And off he went, and he set off at quite a jog. Una went back into the house and woke Finn up straight away. Come on, get rid of him quick. So Finn picked up his spear and he ran after the giant. Get out of my country, he said. And he ran and he chased the Scottish giant over the causeway. And as the giant went, he picked up some of the cores when he threw it into the sea so that Finn couldn't follow him. And Finn was so cross when he passed Porter down, he scooped up a clod of earth and he threw it at the giant. And it missed the giant and landed in the sea. And that became the Isle of Man. The Scottish giant got back to Scotland. <gasps> and he vowed he'd never go to Ireland to speak to that Finn McCall ever again. And he never did. But, you know, if you go to Staffa in Scotland or to the Giant's Causeway in Ulster, you can still see what's left of that causeway. But as far as I know, there have not been any giants there for a long time. The end. Oh, give yourselves a clap, everybody. Hi, everybody. It's lovely to see you all watching this morning. Right then, let's see who else, what else is coming out of here. Which country we're going to next? Oh, oh, we're going to Germany. OK, so... This is a very famous story, okay, it's a fairy story, and it's called The Elves and the Shoemakers. And this was written by the Brothers Grimm, and they wrote lots of fairy stories, so things like Hansel and Gretel, uh, Red Riding Hood, R Rumpelstiltskin, oh, they wrote so many stories, lots and lots of stories. But this is The Elves and the Shoemakers. Here we go. You know how it belongs. Here it begins. Are we ready? Long, 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 long. Long, all together now, long ago, far away from here, there was a shoemaker and he made the most beautiful leather shoes. But times were hard and eventually the shoemaker looked in his box and all he had was enough leather to make one more pair of shoes. <sighs> the shoemaker knew that enough leather for one pair of shoes was not going to keep his business going, but he sat down and he cut them out and made them as beautifully as ever. He cut out the leather, let's go. He cut out the shapes. He cut out the shapes, but then, oh, his neck was aching. His shoulders ached. 
I'll get up early in the morning and I'll sew them together then. And he left the leather out on the workbench, ready for the next day. When he woke up the next day, he came into the workshop and he looked on the table. And there were the most beautiful pair of shoes he'd ever seen. He looked at the stitching. It was tiny and perfect. He looked at the soles, beautifully made. Where on earth did they come from? It must be my leather, because there's none left. Hmm, oh well. So the man put them out in his shop, and soon somebody came in and said, those shoes are beautiful, how much are they? But when the shoemaker told him the price, oh no, 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 I will give you more than that. They are worth every penny. They are beautifully made. And he paid more than the shoes were worth. So now the shoemaker had enough leather to buy to make two pairs of shoes. So he went out, he bought the leather, he brought it back to the bench and he started to cut out. Are you ready with your scissors? He cut and cut and cut and cut and then he left the leather on the table. He said, I'll do those in the morning. Well, when he woke up the next morning, you won't believe what had happened. He came into the workshop and there, not one, but two pairs of beautifully made shoes. What on earth is happening? What on earth is, is causing these shoes to be made? It's not me. Oh, well, he said, I'll sell them anyway. And he put the shoes into the shop window and soon two people came in, said these are beautiful shoes and paid more than the shoes were worth. So now the shoemaker had enough money to buy leather to make four pairs of shoes. He went out, he bought the leather, he brought it back. Are you ready with your scissors? Let's get snipping. He snipped and snipped and snipped and snipped and snipped and snipped until... Four pairs of shoes were cut out, ready to be sewn together. That night, he said to his wife, I think we should stay up, wait by the candlelight and see if we can see who is making these shoes. Good idea, said his wife. So they laid out the leather just perfectly and they hid in a dark corner just by the candlelight, one candle. And at midnight, you'll never get. At midnight, into the workshop came two little elves. They were naked, they didn't have any clothes, and they danced around and danced around. They saw the leather, oh, goody, we can make more shoes. And they started to sew, let's sew, let's sew, let's sew. We'll make the shoes today. Let's sew, let's sew, let's sew. We'll make the shoes today. And they made the shoes beautifully. And then as soon as the shoes were gone, they disappeared. <gasps> Who is making the shoes? That's why the stitching is so beautiful and tiny. So the man gathered up the shoes, he put them in the window, and of course the next day, somebody came in and they bought all the shoes and they paid more. So by now, the man knew that he had enough money to keep the business going. He didn't need the elves' help anymore. And he said to his wife, I think we should do something to help them. I've been thinking the same. She said, they look terribly cold. I'm going to make them some vest and some pants and a little jacket and a hat each. I'll make them some shoes each, said the shoemaker. And so for the rest of the day, the shoemaker made the tiny shoes and his wife made the tiny clothes. And they laid them out in the kitchen, in the workplace. And that night they sat again and waited and at midnight, in danced the little elves. What shall we make today? And then they saw the clothes. <gasps> They've made us clothes. They pulled on the trousers. They pulled on the vest and the jacket and the hat. <gasps> and little shoes, they said. They're lovely. Oh, we look so smart. We don't need to be cobblers anymore. And off they went. And you know, the elves never came back after that day, but the man and the lady did not need their help anymore and they lived long and pros prosperously for the rest of their lives. The end. Give yourselves a clap. Fantastic. Lovely to see you, Maddie. Lammy says hello back. Okay, let me see what else is in here. This is our last story. Which country are we going to this time? Oh, we're going to go to Africa. Okay, so... It's been in our bag, so it's a little bit scrunched. Now, don't worry, if you're a bit alarmed by spiders, this is not a real one. It's just made out of pipe cleaners, okay? So it's supposed to be a spider. Okay, so this 
is one of the Anansi stories. And in African culture, Anansi is a big, big storyteller. They're called spider stories. Okay, so here we go. Long time ago, so you know how it begins. Long, 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 long. All together now, everybody. Long ago, far away from here in the wonderful continent of Africa, there was a spider named Anansi. And Anansi went to speak to the sky god, Anyame, one day. And he said to him, I would love to have all the stories in the world and be able to tell the stories. Will you give me the stories? Oh, said the sky god, you are not the first person who has come to ask me for my stories. But, like everybody else, there is a price to pay. Well, tell me what it is, said Anansi, and I, I will pay it. Many people have tried to pay the price and have not managed it. Well, just tell me, said Anansi, and if I can, I will. Very well, said the sky god. You must bring me the jaguar with the teeth that are sharp as razors. You must bring me the hornet whose sting is like fire. And you must bring the python who can crush anything in its path. Right, OK, said Anansi, I'll give that some thought and I'll be back as soon as I can. And Nancy scurried away, let's go. He scurried this way and that way and this way and that way. And as he scurried, he started to get an idea in his head. Hmm, I'll speak to the hornets first. He came to a tree and he cut off a gourd. It's kind of like a big nut. And he drilled a little hole in it and then he tucked it under his arm, went back into his house and he filled a bowl with water. And he crept along to the place where he knew the hornets were. Can you creep along? And he got there and he sprinkled a bit of water over the hornets and put the rest of it over himself. Oh no, it's raining, it's raining, he said. Oh, it's raining, said the hornets. Oh no, we're going to get wet. Don't worry, said Nancy, come in here. And he guided the hornets into the gourd through the little tiny hole. As soon as the last hornet got in, he blocked up the hole with some moss and some grass. Ha, he said, that'll teach you. And he tucked the gourd under his arm and he took it to the sky god. And when the sky god saw it, he said, Anansi, I am very impressed. You have done well, but you still need to bring me the python and the jaguar. And then I will give you the stories. Right, OK, said Anansi. And he scurried away. Let's go. He scurried this way and that way and this way and that way. And as he scurried, well, he got another idea. Um, hmm, I know, he said. I know how to get that python. And he went to fire his house and got a big long piece of bamboo and some vines. And he put the bamboo and the vines over his shoulder and off he went. Shall we go? He went this way and that way and this way and that way. And he saw the python wriggling in the sun. And as he approached him, he pretended to have a conversation with somebody else. No, no, I think he's taller and stronger. What's that? You think he's shorter and weaker? No, no, no. Definitely taller and stronger. What's that you say? Said the python. Oh, I was just having a chat with my friends about you, really. We were trying to decide if you were longer and stronger than the bamboo or shorter and weaker. Well, obviously, I'm longer and stronger, said the python. I'm very good at crushing things. I'm known as one of the strongest beasts in the jungle. Hmm, well, I thought that too, but the other person didn't seem so sure. They thought you were definitely weaker and shorter. Well, let's measure then. Very well. OK, so Anansi lay the bamboo on the floor and asked the python to wriggle up close to it. But the python couldn't keep still. I can't see how long you are. You're, you're wriggling too much. Well, tie me on, said the python. OK, said Anansi. He tied the head of the python onto the bamboo and tied the tail of the python onto the bamboo and then he said ha you fell for my trick you are not wise and you're not stronger or longer than my bamboo and he picked him up and scurried off to the sky god let's go he scurried this way and that way and this way and that way wow said the sky god i am very impressed you have found two things that i asked you but you still need to find the jaguar. This is the toughest challenge yet. Off you go. 
and Nancy scurried away. Let's go this way and that way and this way and that way. He knew that getting the Jaguar would be tough. But he got to a place in the middle of the jungle where there was a space and he started to dig. Just as well he's got eight legs or it would take him a long time. Should we go? He dug and dug and dug and dug until there was a big pit and he covered the top of it over with branches and leaves so it was like a trap. And then he hid. Along came the jaguar hunting, looking for things to eat and he walked on top of the branches and fell into the pit with a yelp and he stayed there all night. The next day Nancy came along. Oh, he said, what are you doing in there? Oh, so the jaguar, I fell in, can you help me get out? Um, all right, I'll see what I can do. And so and Nancy lowered a big branch of the tree over the pit and he said, tie yourself on with this vine. So the jaguar tied around his paws and then, or on, the ta on his tail and then he tied himself into the tree. Great! said Anansi, and then he chopped and the tree went boing! And the poor jaguar was left spinning and spinning and getting dizzy and sick by his tail which was tied onto the tree. Oh, let me down, let me down! Ha! said Anansi, I don't think so. And quick as a flash he tied the paws of the jaguar together and then he cut him off the trail, off the, uh, the branch and he took him to the sky god. Anansi! I am very, very impressed, said the Sky God. Nobody has managed to bring me all three challenges before. You brought me the hornets with stings of fire. You brought me the python with great strength. And now you bring me the jaguar with teeth like razors. As a reward, you can indeed have the stories and you may go and spread them out around the whole of our wonderful nation. And that is what's and Nancy does to this day. And now you have heard a spider story and you may go and spread it around the people that you know. The end. Give yourselves a clap. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, hello, Bob. Lovely to see you as well. Thank you so much for watching this morning. It's been really lovely to see you. On Wednesday, we're back and we're going to go to three different countries on Wednesday to find out where they are. This afternoon, I'm over on the Wrexham Carnival of Words page doing some special Welsh stories. So we're going to have the enormous Welsh cake and some dragon stories and things like that if you want to tune in at two o'clock on the Wrexham Carnival of Words page. And then tomorrow, I'm back on my Jude Lennon page and we're going to carry on with our stories uh, from Tales of the Travel Pouch. And tomorrow, we're in Argentina. So it's a very big week of going around the world this week. So thanks ever so much for watching. It's been lovely to see you. OK, let's do our goodbye song. Are we ready, Lammy? Goodbye, everyone. Nice to see you. Goodbye, everyone. Nice to see you. Goodbye, everyone. Nice to see you. Nice to see you today. Give yourselves a clap and a pat on the back and a fan dabby dozy. Thanks ever so much for watching, everybody. Lovely to see you. And remember, stay nice and safe. Bye-bye now.